Welcome back to Goliath. I'm Chris Gamble of Developer Relations. And today we're gonna to be talking again about reference designs and a new format for the reference design documentation and how we actually implement them, something called follow along hardware. I have Chris Wilson here with me and we're, we're gonna be kind of going through what some of these early guides are and then how we're going to extend this to all the other reference designs that are on our projects page. Chris, what are some of the first ones that we've put together for the follow along hardware? Yeah, so if you've uh, visited us at, uh, at a conference, come to the Goliath booth, or been following along our blog, you've uh, probably been uh, noticing that we've been working on some of these reference designs. And uh, Chris, if you can show the projects page on... Um, yeah. yeah, so we've got about eight different reference designs here uh, that cover different applications of Goliath. And um, we've been trying to figure out for these designs uh, how do we make it easier for customers to actually get their hands on these designs and start being able to uh, build them themselves? And so we've got uh, two designs here, the air quality monitor and the uh, OBD2 can asset tracker, which now have these additional follow along hardware guides. And uh, what these are is a, uh, they're a guide specifically tailored for using off the shelf hardware that you can buy at DigiKey to replicate the reference design that Goliath has been building. So all the reference designs previously have been built using an internal uh, prototyping platform called Aludel. And uh, you can see that on the, the project page here, we go through in detail exactly how we built that design with the Aludel prototyping platform, uh, what's inside the box. Uh, there's a hardware block diagram for that. But um, as a customer, if you want to actually try out this reference design, we don't, we don't sell this hardware. Goliath isn't in the business of selling hardware. And so we've been thinking about how do we try and get this hardware into customers' hands? And so the, the follow along hardware uh, uses these off the shelf development boards and you can buy these boards online from our partners. Uh, the Nor Nordic has the DK development boards uh, that has the, the NRF 9160 on board. And then you can also buy click headers from a company called Microelectronica, which use a standard uh, socket that you can plug these sensor boards into. And they have, I think, over 1,500 different uh, types of sensor boards that you can buy. Uh, I was listening to a podcast where they were talking about how they release a new board, I think, every every business day or every two business days. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different types of uh, sensors that you can buy and, and plug these uh, plug these onto the development kits. I think one thing that's important is from the beginning, we've we've said that we wanted to do off the shelf hardware, right? One from a logistical standpoint of uh, wanting to have accessible stuff. We, we started building all this, all these reference designs during the chip shortage. So it was also like, what can we buy? What can we make sure yeah. we can buy? What can our customers buy? And then also there was always this thought in mind of taking this to be a follow along guide and actually making it so that people could purchase it and buy it or build it themselves. That's why, you know, if you look at the actual hardware itself here, so if you look at what a an Aludel platform is, right? This is what the uh, the the box looks like in the first place. This is not a super efficient use of space. However, it is using the off the shelf uh, capabilities, and we can then swap in a lot of different types of sensors as well. So we wanted flexibility, sourceability, if that's a word, and we wanted to be able to offer the same to our customers. And now, now that that has been a design idea from the beginning. Well, now that you can go and build it yourself, and Chris has been uh, doing just that. He actually has a bunch on his bench right now. So why don't you walk us through what these actually are? Yeah, so we've got two designs now that support our follow along hardware, and we've got uh, fully detailed guides that'll walk you through exactly how to build these kits yourself. Uh, so the one on the left-hand side is the air quality monitor. We took the uh, Aludel-based reference design and used exactly the same uh, two clickboards. There's a weather clickboard and a uh, air quality clickboard. Um, and so this design can measure temperature, pressure, humidity, CO2, and uh, and particulate matter that's in the air. Um, and this this design is built using exactly the same firmware as the Goliath Aludel based design. So you literally yeah. don't change any of the code. All you have to do is provide a different target to the build command and the firmware will be built specifically for this DK-based reference design, uh, the follow-along hardware design versus the uh, the Aludel-based one. So you get basically exactly the same thing that Goliath had built, but in your own uh, development kit. 
Yeah, it also kind of highlights the importance of flexibility overall, right? So Goliath supports a ton of different hardware uh, stuff out there, right? A lot of different platforms, yeah. a lot of different chipsets, uh, we different RTOSs. This one is using uh, Zephyr, the real-time operating system and ecosystem uh, that's open source. It all targets many different types of hardware, including the NRF9160, like you said here. And uh, this is then the NRF Connect SDK on top of Zephyr. All of these yeah. things are targetable there, in theory, this, uh, you know, we could go and target this towards other hardware or our customers could go and target this towards other hardware. If you're not using cellular, maybe you want to use something maybe in the mid market, you could go to something like the RT 1060, or you could go yep. to ESP 32, all of the things that we, we cover and we talk about on our site, you could go and retarget it there. And now it's kind of showing just these interfaces. This is actually the Arduino Uno interface on a development kit board that then gets uh, mapped to the click headers. And, you know, it just kind of shows the flexibility of pins on hardware. If you then program that into your board files, you get to you get to just have different targets, like you're saying, right, Chris? Yeah, exactly. And I think that we've had it kind of in mind from the from the beginning of starting this follow along hardware that we would be able to add additional guides for different uh, partner development kits. So this isn't just specific to Nordic boards, um, the, the the whole follow along hardware program is designed so that we can add additional boards from other vendors and you can choose a board that has maybe a Wi-Fi interface or a board that has a cellular interface and we'll have detailed guides that will walk you through how to install the, the programmers for, the, for, that, uh, for that microcontroller or for that board, uh, how to download a pre-built firmware binary. So uh, one of the things that we've That's done is we've, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've released uh, pre-built firmware binaries on GitHub so you don't even have to go through in the initial process, you don't have to go through installing a tool chain or building that that firmware, you can just download a firmware blob from GitHub, uh, use the programmer to install that on the board. And it, you can literally get up and running um, from you know assembling the hardware to connect it to Goliath in about five minutes. Um, the, the longest part of the process is just reading the instructions on the page, um, but we go through how to you know program the, the firmware, how to register for an account on Goliath, how to provision the device and how to connect it and get data streaming in. Uh, and it's it's if really it any bizarre. easier. We'd be coming to your house and measuring the temperature, pressure, humidity, <laughs> yeah. whatever the dev kit does ourselves. That's pretty exactly. much the only way we can make it any simpler. Uh, yeah, to do that sort of thing. So. Yeah, it's we we really tried to to make this the fastest and easiest way possible that you can get started with Goliath. And we tried to also reduce as much of the uncertainty as possible. So you're starting with uh, known hardware that's been you know tested and is is widely available. We provide the, the pre-built firmware binaries that you can just install on there. Um, so there's there's really you know no soldering involved. Uh, this is, it is as about as easy as, as it is to to plug some hardware together and get that connected to the internet. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that, that I always talk to to users about, and especially people maybe not hardware super hardware focused themselves, a lot of times you know the. The hardware is not always the product. And as a hardware person, that, that hurts my feelings to say that, but I, I say it anyways. Uh, often the data is the product, right? And that's yeah. what people are looking to build out and sell to, to their customers, that sort of thing. And right. being able to see a dot on a screen or see a chart or whatever, or have, have a, a data set that you can go and put into a, a data model somewhere else, that's actually the product. And, and that's actually hard to get to if you're like, well, now I have to go and learn what an electron is. And it's like, so somewhere between becoming an electrical engineer and wanting to have a dot on a screen with an asset tracker, which is the other thing we should talk about here, uh, yeah. between those two things, I think follow along hardware is actually a little bit closer to the, the dot on a screen. And it's definitely yeah. not faster, like you said, with five minutes. So what is the yeah. one on the right here? Yeah. So the one on the right here is another example of using the same Nordic NRF 9160 DK kind of baseboard, but we've swapped out the sensors. And so this one has a GNSS uh, GPS sensor that will uh, do precise um, location tracking. And then we also have a CAN uh, interface click header that will connect to the OBD2 port in a vehicle. So the idea with this reference design is that you can plug this into your car if you really wanted to and uh, into the OBD2 port, which is the diagnostic port on the car that you would normally hear like a mechanic say, I'm going to plug the computer into the car. That's yeah, the, plug the computer port that yeah. you, would, <laughs> you would plug this into. Um, and you'd be able to, to track the vehicle's speed and location um, pretty much out of the box. You install the firmware, 
uh, you connect the device to Goliath, and then as soon as it turns on, it'll just sit there waiting to um, to start reading out the vehicle speed. And um, we've created a Grafana dashboard that will um, track, the, it will basically show you the vehicle's location and speed over time uh, as the device you know drives around with you in your car. Um, so this this guide that Chris is scrolling through here shows exactly how to assemble the hardware, how to um, uh, flash the image. And then at the bottom of the guide where he's showing right now, uh, there's some next steps about after you've connected the device, what are some other things that you can try with Goliath? Um, things that you can try uh, RPC, you know, the RPC uh, capabilities or looking at the, um, the logging capabilities. Uh, we also have a set of command line tools. So everything that you can do in the Goliath console, you can also do from the command line with uh, the Goliath CTL command. Um, and then at the last step here, we, we go over how to actually build your own custom firmware image. So the pre-built binary that we kind of have you install at the beginning of the design, at the end of this guide, we link to the, the GitHub readme. And this has a detailed set of instructions about how to build this hardware for the follow, how to build the, sorry, how to build the firmware for the follow along hardware. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's really detailed instructions in here about how to set up the uh, uh, the Zephyr environment and how to build the firmware, uh, build the same firmware that we're that we're shipping as the pre-compiled binary. Right, and that's really where I think. So, if you were starting from the follow along hardware, you wanted to just see see it working, see some data, make sure it's something you want to keep exploring. At that point, then you're probably like, all right, I want to customize this. I want to make it, you know, go uh, have a different thing than vehicle speed. Maybe I want to do something different on the OB, OBD2 uh, port, that sort of thing. Yeah, so if you to, wanted you know, to, let's say, like, you know, read out the vehicle's RPM or any yeah. of the other PIDs that are supported uh, via yeah. the OBD protocol. Right, or you could go and add other uh, capabilities, different different settings, you know, all of the things that Goliath enables, then you're right into it and you already have some known working hardware. I always call it like a sanity check as well. And yeah. you can always go back to that binary and start back from the hardware there. And I just feel like that's a really, really useful thing. As someone who's booted up many a reference designs in my career, having something that's like really well known and that I can then go and you know have a solid base to start from, this is kind of a solid base to start from and also a uh, application specific, actually multiple application specific ones because of all the different designs that we have here. Yep. Great. Well, we have many more. Uh, we have a two out of eight of our reference designs uh, have follow along guides. We'll be publishing more of those. Chris, you did a really good job with these, uh, with the follow along guides, and I'm excited to have more of those. Uh, we also are always making more reference designs, and we want to hear from you, uh, our our wonderful users yeah. and viewers here. If you have an application you'd like us to to target, if you have, you know, just a business problem that you need solved, if you need, uh, you know, if you want to view a new thing on the internet with a real world device out in the world, an IOT device, that is stuff that we do every single day. Like I mentioned, we have lots of flexibility because we've you know, targeted these off the shelf platforms. We can integrate new sensors and boot up new new ideas very, very quickly. Uh, and that's, that's what we're great at here. And we wanna make you great at it as well. So thank yep. you, Chris, for showing us and uh, we'll see you in the next, the next reference design and next follow, follow along hardware video. Yep, sounds good. See ya.